Here's the Tor lie detector badge for DEF CON 29 and maybe DEF CON 30 if no one shows up to buy these things. They're $120 and sold at the Hacker Warehouse booth in the vendor area. All the profits go to Tor just like two years ago. So it's powered off two AA batteries and it runs off a Arduino based Zhao MCU that has a USB-C connector and is pretty easy to reprogram. There's a 1.69 shitty add-on header and some other hardware tricks that will be in the GitHub manual. So let's power it up. The main mode is a lie detector mode. There's lots of information online about how subjective polygraphs are. This is why there's an examiner and the machine itself can't determine a lie or a truth. There are polygraph countermeasures you can use, and that's kind of why we made this badge, so you can test those out yourself. From the limited amount that I understand about polygraphs, the examiner attempts to get a baseline lie by asking you a probable lie question. So something like, have you ever stolen anything? And then you admit to stealing a candy bar or office supplies. Then they ask you if you've stolen anything else that you haven't already admitted to, and you say no, and they treat that as a probable lie, and the re they treat the reaction to that as a lie, and they baseline that against other answers they receive later on in the examination. So this graphs the heart rate and the galvanic skin response. So the heart rate's on the right, and the galvanic skin response is on the left. You've probably seen the heart rate sensor style before, so it shines a green LED, and then it reflects off of your finger and measures the amount of blood flow by a sensor that's right under the green LED. There's a clear plastic sticker under this and that helps isolate it electrically. So if that falls off, you can just use a piece of clear plastic tape. So initially it's very sensitive, just waving your hand over it will um, cause it to trigger. Um, so what you wanna do of course is put your finger on it and block all other light reaching that sensor that's right underneath it. And if you put too much pressure on it, like I suspect you will at first, you'll probably see something like this and it's not able to pick up your actual BPM, right? So you want to just kind of rest your finger on there, a little bit lighter pressure, um, and then it'll be able to calculate your BPM and also your Delta BPM, which is the difference in BPM 10 beats ago versus what it is now. If you put too light a pressure on there, um, it'll kind of clip or get a little all jaggy like this and that's not really what you want. So this can take five to 10 seconds when you first put your finger on the sensor. So just kind of wait a little bit and it should eventually start seeing uh, valid readings. Once you see a BPM, you'll notice that the green LED on the Zhao and the little heart rate icon in the bottom right animate. So that's how you can tell that it's accurately reading your BPM. On the left side, you have your Gavanic skin response. There's a little potentiometer right here that will help you calibrate it and adjust it. What you Ideally what you want is you want to put on the finger cuffs and adjust that so that the reading is around 512, which is in the middle of the 10-bit ADC. Realistically, it doesn't need to be exactly around 512. It just needs to be not at the extreme ends. If you suspect that the Gavanic skin response is not actually working, you can touch these two contacts together and you'll see the reading drop because it's measuring the resistance between those two contact points. Effectively, what's happening is if you get nervous or think of something embarrassing or trigger that kind of fight or flight response within you, that will cause your fingers to sweat just a little bit and that will change the resistance between those two contact points and you'll see the value drop, right? So you can intentionally trigger this with a sudden inhale and exhale. <sighs> and you can see that drop pretty drastically. The Delta GSR is the reading from 30 samples ago up till now, which is roughly half the screen width. Um, so you're looking for a Delta GSR of at least negative 10, probably around negative 20, and then you can kind of consider that triggered. Now, you'll notice that after it's triggered, it, the GSR kind of slowly creeps back up, right? And it takes a while for your sweat to evaporate, I guess. So you can't just kind of ask someone question after question after question. At a certain point, they won't be able to trigger the GSR sensor anymore. Um, and this is why real polygraphs, they'll ask you a question and then they'll wait 30 seconds in between there. So this is connected via a JST 2.0 connector. You want to make sure you're pretty gentle with this. I suspect people might accidentally break these off. You want to use your nails and pull on the white plastic portion, not the wires themselves, and probably not wrap it too tightly around the badge itself. So there are other ways to trigger this. Um, apparently you can squeeze your butthole because Yep, look at that, that works. Because the real polygraphs have a little rig around your chest that are me it's measuring your breath, right? So you can't just suddenly <sighs> inhale and exhale quickly 
um, because they'll notice that the reason the GSR triggered is because you inhaled and exhaled suddenly, right? So the butthole trick is probably a little bit better. Um, temperature can affect the reading of the galvanic skin response, right? Because it's effectively measuring the sweat or the resistance between those two points. So we'll see how it works in a very arid environment. But if it's very, very hot or very, very cold, um, it likely won't work as well as you suspect. There are other tips and tricks about both the galvanic skin response and the heart rate sensor in the manual. So if you're seeing something weird or it's not working quite right, um, go there and check it out. Effectively, the short version is the heart rate sensor. You need to keep your finger on there for around 10 seconds at first, and not put too much pressure, not put too little pressure. And the galvanic skin response, you need to kind of dial this in with the potentiometer and um, just kind of trigger it with a sudden inhale and exhale. <sighs> So there are a couple other modes and options, right? So you can change the screen brightness. Although the battery life should be around 40-ish hours. There's a sleep mode, although now that we added a hard power switch, it's kind of useless. You can calibrate the GSR, but you can do this just the same in the actual live lie detector mode. Like there's nothing different here. It's just spitting out the raw ADC reading. And there are some cheat modes, which we'll get into later. Couple bling modes. So if you're just kind of walking around, um, you can turn on this fake heart rate, and it's just kind of static. But put something on the screen without you having to actually touch the heart heart rate sensor. And if you hit up and down, you can turn the blink back of the LEDs off, right? So otherwise, it blinks the both the green heart rate sensor LED and the blue LED on the Zhao. There's a logo scroll mode for the Tor logo itself. You can speed this up or slow it down. The camera showing the refresh painting, but you don't really see that in person. Um, and you can invert the colors of this. You can even kind of stop it by pushing down all the way. There's a bad DEF CON advice mode that I stole off Twitter. So um, I think I just searched for bad DEF CON advice. This was a thing like two years ago, so I threw these in here. This can act as a screensaver also. It kind of cycles through these every minute or so. And there's also a name scroll mode, so you, you can put in your own name and um, press and hold right, and it will show that name. It also saves it to flash. Similarly to the logo scroll, you can speed this up, slow this down, um, invert the colors, and stop it. So let's talk about the... There's a little help mode to find the manual if you don't know where to look. So let's talk about the cheat modes that I mentioned. So... The first one is you hit the right button. So if you hit the right button, it'll intentionally kind of falsely trigger a GSR um, dip, you know, that is usually apparent when you lie or when you're nervous. So it'll kind of look the same every time, but this is when you hook up your friend and you want to kind of screw with them. The way you can tell if this is working is in the very bottom right corner of the right screen, the that one pixel will light up. So it drops, and then once it drops, it tries to go back to the current live reading of the galvanic skin response. So once it reaches the live reading, um, then the cheat mode is kind of disabled, and the pixel will be um, unlit. So right now it's climbing back, it finds the live GSR reading, then the pixel goes off, and now you're back to the actual reading. Um, similarly, if you press and hold up, the bottom right pixel of the left screen will light up. And what this does is effectively preventing you from lying. So now the Delta GSR will not drop more than around negative 10, even if the actual GSR reading does. So right now nothing's happened. I think I'm around the live value. So you can just, I can press in, the LED shows up that the cheat is working, but the actual galvanic skin response sensor isn't dropping either. So if I intentionally drop it with the cheat mode on, you can see that the Delta GSR doesn't really go between or below negative 10, kind of slowly creeps down when in reality it would have dropped very quickly. Um, so this is trying to prevent the output from showing or triggering a GSR reading that looks like a lie. And then after you release the up button, the GSR reading will kind of slowly climb back up to the actual reading. Once that happens, then the pixel will go off again. So let's do that one more time. Press and hold. <sighs> Trigger it. 
And now if I release it right now, it hasn't reached the live value. So it's still sl slowly, slowly climbing down until it reaches the live value and then the pixel will go off and now we're back at the live reading. So there's a little bit more explanation of this online on the manual, but those are the couple modes of the Tor badge this year. Again, 120 bucks, vendor area, hacker warehouse booth, and the profits go to Tor. Our Twitter handles are probably the easiest way to contact us. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. If you choose to buy one, thanks for supporting Tor.